it's Scott Manley here, back from holiday in Scotland at last. Now, I know you have all been uh, missing my regular output, but I am back, and while I've been away, there have been a lot of changes in a lot of games, but I thought we would go for this very first video back to Kerbal Space Program, because while I was away, two of the most important mods in Kerbal history have happened. And so this is going to show you the very first one. Yes, getting into orbit, we deploy the fairing and reveal a ginormous banana. Yes, this is from the developer of Fire Spitter, Schno. Yes, I don't know how you say that, but I'm going to call him Schno because it sounds kind of, sounds kind of Scottish. Yes, this historic banana sat is going to go into orbit. We just have to fire it up to orbital velocity. We obviously jettison the fairing before that, so we leave as little debris around as possible. The, uh, the banana will actually operate as a space probe, so you just need to attach something to it. It doesn't have any, uh, like, in, in internal torque or electric power, but there we go, the historic deployment of banana sat 1. There we go, look at it, revolving ever so slowly. I have SAS enabled and it does nothing, you notice. It does have RCS to enable it to maneuver because it doesn't really have any stack attachment. It only allows, you know, radial attachments or uh, surface attachments. But look, we'll uh, turn the whole thing around. It obviously has a couple of uh, solar panels there to make it look, well, you know, really satellite-like. We have some RCS tanks and, well, looks pretty good from this angle. Obviously peeled from one angle to, uh, you know, improve the banana's, uh, you know, thermal exchange properties or something like that. There we go, rotating it ever so carefully, ever so slowly above the surface of Kerbin so that the entire Kerbal race can stare up at this magnificent creation and feel that they as one would really like a banana right now. Now the second mod is this little one attached on the side. That is a new cutting edge science experiment. That is banana for scale and like the liquid goo you can observe it and see how it reacts. You notice there is some kind of bug eating at the banana, even although it's being exposed to space. Clearly, the genetic and radioactive properties of the banana have done something to this bug to make it survive in the harsh environments of space. Moving on, of course, you can build other vehicles with this banana, perhaps as its core. It will operate as a space probe, as I've said. It doesn't have any torque, doesn't have any power, but you can provide all that. The only thing is it naturally kind of wants to be on its side here. We'll, we'll make ourselves a little car here. I've uh, turned everything around a little and there we go. Banana, the peeled end is facing forwards and it actually wants to sit on its side naturally. So you'll notice that the surface on the nav ball is sitting at 90 degrees to what we might otherwise expect. But look, it maneuvers perfectly fine because the, the wheels are taking control here. The... Uh, the steering and everything is as you would expect, even although the horizon is all messed up there. Yeah, look, we'll bring it around. Maybe we, uh, just, maybe we can do a little bit of a jump here. Let's see how the first jumping banana. Ha ha! And look at that. It got a whole couple of feet, maybe. Let's try it here. And yeah, we got some clearance there. We have definitely got a rallying banana. But if you really want a banana to fly, well, you got to make a banana plane. Uh, Let's try that again. Uh, banana plane! Let's revert to launch and see if we can make it actually lift off. Clearly we have to deal with the nav ball a little more carefully. There we go, into the air. Now, uh, this is actually flying backwards, you'll notice. The nav ball is showing uh, the retrograde velocity and that's because I flipped the whole thing around. I thought the peeled side looked too non-aerodynamic. Also, because I'm sitting at 90 degrees, I had to relearn to fly it using the D key to pitch up and the A key to pitch down. It was not the easiest thing to overcome the muscle memory that I have built up. But nevertheless, we did actually fly around and were able to get a nice fly past off the, the monolith there. Look at that. And a little close approach to the, to the base here. How close can I get without crashing it? Because it would be a shame to have banana 
all over the walls. There we go, perfectly. Could you imagine having banana everywhere? It would be, you know, it's a very slippery situation. Of course, if you really want to put banana somewhere, what you really want to do is build a banana bomber. This is, of course, with the help of the rest of the fire spitter pack here. Uh, I built myself a bit of a bomb bay here using uh, struts and using panels and girders. And it actually works pretty well. Uh, originally, the thing just wanted to pitch up too much, so I added this extra engine on top to kind of balance everything out. Once I've got it set up, it does actually fly pretty well. This thing I took far too long on. I thought that I would just knock out a quick video to say, hey guys, I'm home from Scotland and I'm going to be making more videos because, you know, Interstellar Quest takes a long time to make. But no, I uh, ended up wasting far too much time because I couldn't sleep because of jet lag. Interstellar Quest will be back, as will more Xenonauts, as will more... Uh, Star Citizen, Elite, we're all keeping up with everything and of course there's a ton of games that I have yet to play. But I have turned around, I am set up for my bombing run here once again. Where, oh, this thing does wobble like something crazy here. It flexes a lot because there's nothing, there's nothing to hold that bomb bay together basically underneath. I could probably add something, but never mind, we're on our bombing run ready to deploy and away we go bananas away oh we apparently have a bouncing banana bomb i did not expect that oh but there it goes banana delivered successfully so yes i am back in the us i am scott manley and until next time fly safe